Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you don't have to be self-conscious. <laughs> I'm still going to be self-conscious. Just That's a great place to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you were gone in Wisconsin, your native lands. Yeah. With your brothers and you went on an adventure, right? <laughs> I went on a couple adventures. Yeah. I, uh, so I was, yeah, traveling. Um, and the, I, I surprised most of my family cause I was, um, <clears throat> oh, I think I mentioned the last time I, we were talking on this podcast, but I was in Wisconsin at that point cause I was, uh, surprising my sister at her, her wedding, um, just kind of a, a small thing. And so it wasn't going to be a big deal if I wasn't there, but I was there. So that was nice. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got some hunting in and stuff like that. So, um, was it successful? I didn't see anything. I, w I went into like a tower stand with my dad, uh, but then some friends of his were, uh, also visiting. They saw something, but it was bow it's bow season and the, it was way too far away to take a shot. So, um, you know, it, but it's nice to get out in nature and I, um, I just started birding, right? So yeah. I downloaded this this app that can identify bird calls, bird songs. So I was messing with that while I was out there. So yeah, it's it was fun. It was good. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then now to the important stuff about life. Mm -hmm. Games. Games. <laughs> <laughs> I have been thinking lately just how much games affect or just like how much of my life and the content I consume is game related. Yeah, it's YouTube like and stuff. most of my life too. Yeah. It's what I did in my free time my entire life. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much right there with you. But now I'm birding. Yeah, now it's better. Yeah. Now instead of winning, you just you just look. <laughs> you don't there's no winner or loser in bird watching unless you make it competitive, right? Yeah. No, it's I yeah, I just went on my first official trip the other day, I was telling you saw some some cool birds but then again what got me into birding was wingspan so it, it all, all comes, comes back to circle. games <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you got your core box right mm -hmm. yeah so while i was home my brother-in-law he works really close to this brick and mortar called noble knight games and noble knight they do a lot of online resale of all sorts of board games. I think their slogan is, you know, where nothing's ever out of print or something. Cause there's, you know, they, their bread and butter is just resale board games, but the brick and mortar was not far from us. And so I looked on their site and, um, put, uh, just, yeah, uh, set aside one collection that someone had it, it, I, I don't know where it might've, they might've stopped chronologically, but, I had the core box in there. I had Red Skull, Sinister Motives, and then the the Noble Knight listing also listed, I think, just four different heroes. And it was like, uh, it was Vision, War Machine, Wasp, and someone else. But then, to my surprise, uh, there was actually like there were actually like half a dozen more heroes then was listed on there that's always a great <laughs> surprise yeah i mean buying pre-owned is is a gamble for sure because yeah another thing that i discovered how much is, was it for all that uh for all that it was a hundred 140 bucks nice so, so like two core boxes retail price yeah it's so like what the core box is like 70 and then the expansion to like 40 45, something 45 new yeah so, so it's like the so you got all that for just the retail price of the core box and the two campaign boxes you got and then plus all those hero packs yeah yeah i i don't remember how much exactly i would have saved but it was a gamble that i think paid off yeah because like each hero pack is like like 18 dollars mm -hmm. and how many do you have Jeez. like extra from the how many extra boxes? there was miss marvel hulk thor Black Widow, uh, maybe a couple more in there. Um, Captain America, I was not expecting. So, so like six, seven? Something like that, so yeah. If you get seven, then that's 140. 
So it's yeah. already half off. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> so half off at Noble Knights for yeah. looking at a deal and that can't find Captain America because he's forty dollars online now. Yeah. I'm it, it is honestly it's it's not a, a good it's not the ideal purchase for everyone because I think someone like me who already is familiar with the game has only played with your card so far but now um i i know enough to know that i do want to make a significant investment and so i i was looking on normal night games it, it a you significant know, investment that you didn't take back with you right i don't have it here with me i left it in wisconsin because my brother-in-law like we love board games we discovered that in the during the um early days of the pandemic we had nothing to do and we're you know eventually got to talk and it said wait you like board games you like board games so um i left it back there for him and um my other uh, siblings like to play occasionally but um alex is the the brother-in-law who's really into uh, games like that so i left it there as like sort of a gift for him and just i also didn't have a lot of room in my um in my suitcase because i was smuggling back like 30 beers for my friend and their beers that are only sold in Wisconsin. So I was full up already and I didn't have room for the boxes. So are you going to get like some sort of used core box here? I could, I could. If you but saw a half off why core buy box. the cow when the milk's for free. It, it, is my collection the milk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Okay. I think you're I, the I cow lime, in your collection lime of milk. juice, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. You'll just use I, me for my collection I, and, then, and then and then that's it. No, I'm just I, a collection to you. <laughs> Come on, man. No, that that is uh that's too heartless. I I'm not actually going to I'm not going to stand by that. Although we were talking and I was saying you could use a villain on your yeah, channel. Yeah, Johnny is my self-proclaimed enemy of the channel. Yeah, because I've been watching a lot of professional wrestling, and this is what I was talking about last time. Storytelling is is integral to the human condition, and <laughs> Terry Pratchett said we're the storytelling ape. So you know, if you have a heel to match the face, you're gonna tell a better story. And so anyway, <laughs> um, the enemy to my right left on the i don't remember i'm on the right on the left in the video to my right in the real life yes yeah <laughs> well i don't know i have to come up with like a costume and a theme but yeah what's the enemy of limes in nature nature well yeah in nature uh lemons i guess lemons no but lemons are like a aren't lemons like a hybrid of a lime and a limoncello or something I didn't know which came first. It's like a donkey and a mule. It's it's something like that. I don't know. Okay. So it's currently you're the lemon. Yeah. I'm the you're timid, the cowardly I'm the lemon. Timid lemon. <laughs> and I'm calling you out. <laughs> yeah, the the timid lemon that <laughs> it's just a, a menace. <laughs> a bombastic menace of a lemon. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. And then Okay, I don't know. I made the slides with Johnny, but he is doing this podcasting curse thing where now anything that happens that we would talk about on the podcast, he just refuses to tell me about until the podcast. So I don't know what he wants to say about these heroes. <laughs> Some of it I have already expressed a little bit, but yes, I was also realizing, oh, I'm milling my life for content now. Yeah, on my channel even. You don't even have your own. This is my villain origin story. <laughs> this is why I, you're my enemy. Because I your life is becoming my content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kinda. No. Um, all right. We'll, we'll start with Captain Marvel here. She was the first um, deck that I played out of this brand new set that I bought. <clears throat> I did the, the Captain Marvel leadership pre-con. And without the Triskelion, right? Without the Triskelion, uh, yes. I bought pre-owned, and that's the one card I discovered so far that was not actually in that set. But, you know, I just uh, 
shuffled a, another I just shuffled a justice deck into the card and I said that's the Triskelion. Yeah. <laughs> I know what the stats are. That makes sense. So I don't I don't mind that too much. I could see how that could bother other people, but I got Well, if you get half off half of the off. used collection and you're missing one support card, yeah. I think it's worth it, but yeah, I don't I don't think that bothered me in that case. Mm -hmm. I'd be bothered if my brand new core box didn't have it. Sure. Yeah. No, that's fair. So what do you think of Captain Marvel? So I played her on standard claw? No. Yes. I don't remember who I faced, but just on standard in solo. In, in solo and my first impression was damn, she she feels hard to lose with. Um yeah. just just high health. High health, high and damage, high thwart. Great draw. Um that, like a, a triple baked into the deck is great. I think there's two of them. There's two triples, yeah. 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 Um, so I think she was not uh, like super special because something I think you've heard, I've heard I've heard you say is her uh, her thwart event is has diminishing returns if you can't get aerial. Um, that. Oh, it's just bad if you can't get aerial. Yes, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll uh, I'll speak with a. Anyway, um, so I I did notice that, but other than that, I mean, she felt just fun, not too complicated. Um, and so then I I also, I'm, I'm gonna jump out of chrono chronological order a little bit, but after trying out a couple more heroes, I. I introduced my brother-in-law Alex to his first game and he played the her leadership precon deck while I played She-Hulk Aggression's precon deck. Um that's what I was using against Ultron with She-Hulk. Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. I uh wait, Ultron with She-Hulk? I I saw you posted a video about Expert Claw with She-Hulk. Oh, the the Ultron one's scheduled. I guess I spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got closer on Ultron. Okay. I don't know. I got really, I just got like blasted on the last turn right before I was about to win in both scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. And I faced, I had that same matchup and we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit, but with Captain Marvel, Alex was really into that. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think he's a great starting hero. Having decent card draw, I think just feels good. Um, and well, Alex is used to other games, right? That's right. And then, like, if you have more cards in general across all games, it's just better. Yeah. Yeah, he is a Magic the Gathering player from back in the day. You know, not anymore because he has other things to spend his money on. But um, he already had an in intuitive sense of how the game worked much more than I did when I started because I had never really touched a deck builder besides Yu-Gi-Oh! as we talked about. Yeah, which is just... Also not. It's like crisis interdiction. Yeah. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> yeah, I love it, but it's horrible. <laughs> so yeah, he he took it like took to it like a duck to water, and um, yeah, Captain Marvel. I think good good starting hero. Um, I was also that was also my first experience in duos. Besides, like maybe one or two like brief attempts between you and me um yeah we haven't really played duo no um and i i definitely i like it as much as three player i like it maybe a little more than solo um it it felt good and game wasn't too long and um yeah i i it, i I played Aggression She-Hulk's precon uh, solo mm -hmm. before I then played it in duos with, with Alex. And just those couple of uh, games to compare, I was like, oh, She-Hulk is doing much, much better here with uh, someone else to... Yeah, I don't... Especially with the core box, I don't think it was... I don't think solo was the main player count by any means. Yeah. Because the heroes there have like pretty distinct strengths and weaknesses yeah that sort of just disappeared as more releases came out and as the like solo audience became more prevalent okay because like yeah. spider-man just can't thwart 
unless there's a minion. Right. And then your only way to thwart being you have to get the your upgrade in your hand and then also be able to defeat the minion. And having that timing work out is really unreliable. Yeah. And then, like, Iron Man, like, he just loses if he can't get set up fast enough. Mm -hmm. His weakness is really obvious. Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel's weakness, I think, is a little bit more insidious than the others. It's because she's really, she doesn't, she doesn't really have a weakness because of her card draw and her base stats. But at the same time, you'll notice all of her cards, except for, like, energy absorption, energy channel, and uh, her support, the, um, what is it yeah, called? I can picture it. Uh, it's uh, Alpha it's, Flight Station. Yeah. All of those cards are great. But then the rest of them, like her events, are all worse than the other heroes. It's mm -hmm. so, like Crisis Interdiction is um, not not that good. Yeah. And like Black Panther thwarts more. Iron Man, once he's set up with the arc reactor, is better at thwarting. And I guess Spider-Man, just that's his weakness, so she's better at it than Spider-Man. But mm -hmm. like her only strength is her card draw, and then like her attack event does less damage than Spider-Man and Iron Man and She-Hulk's and Black Panther's once he's set up. So like, but but she's more consistent than all of them. Yeah. But like when I played her, like going back to the core box, it's kind of awkward for me because I normally like with my full card pool, I can take it. I can just build incredibly powerful decks based off her card draw, and just really lean into the aspects. Mm -hmm. But without without that. I keep drawing into her cards, and I'm like, I don't like like half these cards. Yeah, but I love the other half. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's weird. It was it's weird for me with her. She's clearly powerful. Yeah, but it's just half her cards are like broken, and the other half are like fine. Sure. <laughs> I didn't I didn't really put her through the paces. Yeah, I just did standard encounters but actually I, I think i want to talk about iron man next because um he I, I i faced crossbones with iron man and i think i lost and then i won mm -hmm. um but absolutely agree with what you said sometimes he you, he just cannot get uh set up fast enough no matter how hard you try and Crossbones has that that three stage scheme, and yeah. so I pretty much just had to let the <clears throat> the the first stage of it finish, uh, and that that's really how I lost. I think um, the first one or two times I tried him against Crossbones is because um, it's just almost I would say like ninety percent of the time I'm gonna guess it's almost like not an option to flip up at all turn one. So yeah. Yeah, I even like because Iron Man is interesting because he takes like three or four turns to get set up mm -hmm. when he's with if you have a limited card pool. But then if you have access to like all the protection cards, there's like so many tech upgrades you can add into his deck that are also energy resources for him mm -hmm. that you can set up by by turn two pretty reliably. Which changes him completely. Yeah. But without that, without that like one archetype for him, he's he's much slower on the setup. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting because when I played him, I played him against Expert Ultron using the precon deck. The I used the leadership precon deck mm -hmm. against Expert Ultron, and I didn't struggle at all with Ultron. Yeah. But that's because Ultron has his first scheme goes fast. But his yep. second one has 10. Right. So, like, he can flip up turn 3 or 4 against Ultron, and then he's just strong enough to deal with Ultron. So Ultron was actually really easy for him. Whereas when I took him up against Claw, without, with just the precon decks, I got completely obliterated. Mm -hmm. Because Claw adds pressure at the beginning, and then if you flip up to deal with it, you're weak. And if you stay down... He finishes his main scheme and then brings out another minion. Yeah, it's like Claw, Claw Expert Claw is so, much harder for Iron Man than Expert Ultron, mm -hmm. from what I've seen. And then even Rhino on Expert Mode, from the playtests I had, it wasn't. It was. I feel like the win rate against Rhino would just be like random, whether I won or won, won or lost. It's like I won 
well, I lost to end one. I, I made a dumb play that I shouldn't have done. Sure. And then just got, got advance, and then he finished the scheme in one turn, even though it only had one threat on it. When yeah. I, I shouldn't have flipped down. I didn't have to flip down. I just was wanted to because I thought it would be more fun. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't Iron Man's, Iron Man's fault. It was just me not playing optimally because I didn't feel like it. Yeah. But like, so like Iron Man won that encounter and I lost because then I undid it. I undid it and like, okay, I lost, but I'm trying to test the hero's strength. So I'm just going to see if I had not not been dumb yeah 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 what what iron man could have done and he just easily dealt with it mm -hmm. but notably i did not get unlucky at the beginning so like i think rhino he could probably win most of the time with a pre-con deck but then it'd just be like random when you lost and then with ultron i feel like he can fairly consistently win which is interesting and then claw you just like have to get lucky hmm. sure so it's like he's like inverted on the difficulty of like as you progress through the box whereas like captain marvel i haven't tested it yet but she dealt with rhino pretty easy on my stream i haven't done claw and ultron yet but i imagine it's just going to keep getting harder for her and then spider-man is i'm pretty sure it's going to keep getting harder for him yeah so she he kind of like goes against the curve of the box hmm. Hmm. from what i've seen of it yeah so yeah, I think um, I was just playing with the with the precon deck in the rules reference, and so I hadn't thought about looking for any um, deck building to add in tech cards that aren't just his hero specific cards. But that makes a lot of sense. I'm just realizing, um, yeah, to to actually like improve your deck in that way. I don't um, know if you had any. From what I remember, SPDR is the pack that has like a bunch of tech upgrades mm. that he needs mm -hmm. i don't know he needs energy barrier which you've used with use that in your wolverine deck i did yeah it's like energy barrier electrostatic armor and force field generator sure. and then they're all tech upgrades so just yeah i can't remember what packs they all come in but yeah i know spdr has some of them gotcha so yeah iron man it was good i can definitely see where he'd be better in two player, but I didn't try him in, in multiplayer. Um, then I got to Captain America and, oh, that's another thing I had in this, in this set was um, the green gob goblin mutagen formula and risky business. Nice. And I took cap Captain America uh, through mutagen formula a couple of times and i think i lost maybe like two or three times before i won was it on standard or expert i don't remember it was probably expert yeah um but that was that was like my first real taste of defeat i guess yeah i would say you were you were, you didn't know defeat before that <laughs> like that elden ring boss I don't. I haven't played Elden. I haven't either. <laughs> but there's one who's never known defeat. I think. Anyway, um, Cap was. He's not my favorite. He. I was telling you. I think. I I played with his leadership precon, and he always just felt one card short, between discarding cards from your hand. Um, Wonder Man is also in that pre-con as an ally and his requirement to attack with him is you also have to discard a card. Um, and so, and then, you know, the way the, the shield toss works where you d discard X cards to wank X enemies. Sorry. Do I, you want to go on the next We could slide. go on the next slide. Uh, I just, I like, uh, I just love this panel. Wank. <laughs> It's uh, what, what's that guy's name? It's the the voice, the controller. But okay, so the controller is the guy he's wanking. Oh, you mean <laughs> the guy behind him? The voice is the one who's controlling controller. With his, I think the voice's power is that. Wait, he is he was... controlling Captain America to hit? No, I think I don't remember the full history behind this panel, but I think the voice is is controlling controller to do something. I don't know. I don't read that many Captain America comics, but I just I I I 
always thought this was funny. Um, <laughs> that's all we can say on that. I don't have much more to say on Cap, but he's, he's just wank. That's all you got. To that's say all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting to me because Captain America is a hero that the community like generally loves. Yeah, he came out really early. He was like the first hero pack release, mm -hmm. and like everyone at the beginning of the game was like, "Oh, this is the S tier hero. Mm. Nothing stronger than Captain America." And then like except for Doctor Strange. Yeah. So it was always like Captain America, Doctor Strange when I looked at like really, really old YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And now he's kind of like dropped into A tier for people. Yeah. But they just like love his ability to thwart four or attack for four on turn one like yeah. every time. And I do, I I enjoyed that as well. As, as we talked about last time, I, I, I do like ready mechanics. Yeah. Um, with him, I was still still trying to figure out, you know, and it was just it was the pre-con, so not as um, strong as I could have made the deck. But um, yeah, I haven't played him that much. So like, I don't have a lot to add to that because I know how other people feel about him, but I haven't really played him. My only real experience playing him was I, I was playing a leadership deck where I just played a bunch of economy supports and allies and i just got a lot of output out of them because he has three defense with retaliate mm -hmm. with that shield so yeah. i just stayed alive and then did that and i won but i don't i don't even remember what scenario i was against mm -hmm. it's like yeah i have to play him more but luckily i'm almost done with the core box and then i unlock captain marvel and miss marvel and the green goblin pack because they all came out at the same time so captain america miss marvel green goblin yeah. yeah. You said Captain Marvel. Yeah. Unfortunately. Understandable. Understandable. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have a lot to say about Cap. Yeah. He's all right. This was my my true test for myself. Mm -hmm. Whether I was a true gamer. Yeah. Was Did you, did you get, get a Mountain Dew out? out? I I was drinking a lot of spin drifts. They're <laughs> the sparkling water. Those are uh those are pretty good. Um but this was in my mind, I was thinking, testing these different heroes and thinking, to me, this seems like the most difficult matchup in the core box would be She-Hulk versus Ultron. And I said, all right, let's 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 put it through the paces. Let's get weird. Um, try with the aggression pre-con deck that's in the, in the rules reference. Mm -hmm. And... I tried and I lost badly like four <laughs> or five times and, but I was learning a little bit each time, yeah. each time I was realizing, Oh, you know what? When I flip up and can deal two damage to an enemy, it probably should be a, a drone, even though that's overkilling it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's worth clearing them out versus well, putting if you get attacked by the drone, then you take a damage. Whereas if you did the two damage to it, so it's like yeah. you you deal one and prevent one versus dealing two to Ultron. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I was just learning a little bit as I go, and then I commented on your video this morning about She Hulk versus Expert Claw. Yeah, about my unoptimal play. <laughs> yeah, just like something I realized after three or four games with her. I was when she's in alter ego mode and can interrupt, prevent one threat from adding to a scheme. Well why don't I just save that interrupt until after the villain schemes and use that interrupt against a, uh, a minion because like if, if his scheme, stop the main scheme anyways, if his scheme flips to stage two or three, <laughs> there's no use spending that interrupt to prevent the, the scheme, the, yeah, the scheme from flipping. Um, so yeah, just little things like that. Um, I wonder in that play, cause I can't remember the exact situation cause it was a while ago, Yeah, but was it, was there any chance that my interrupt stopped the main scheme from finishing? No. No? Not so was I just resigned? <laughs> maybe. You know, maybe you've been playing a couple games and weren't thinking about it. or Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember that. I can't remember, but I made a mistake. But I lost really, you, really, really you, bad on the you next You did turn, not so lose to the scheme. scheme. Yeah. No, it was not to the scheme. It was to Melter's boost. Yeah, I had three allies out, and I was going to try to one-shot him, right? And then... Yep. And then I got all my allies exhausted, and then a minion came out from the side scheme, right? And then I got gang up. Yep. yep. <laughs> that's that's what happened. <laughs> um, that was horrible. 
So, yeah, lost badly with her a few times, but I was learning a little bit here and there. And I, my, my, my understanding is that she's not too popular. Um, yeah, not, not the most popular. Yeah, it is tough only having one port and four hand size. Four hand size is just killer. Um, but, and there are, there are cards in her kit that I like focused rage that I never prioritized because I was just, I, in my opinion, they were too costly for the, the benefits. Um, but you know, I, I still didn't mind her and I, I liked some of the, the ways that her, uh, her cards worked. Um, she's just like this, she, she's like Kim Wexler from, uh, Better Call Saul, just like yeah. this great lawyer. I could use another word. Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> no, I'll just say it. She's just this MILF lawyer who can like <laughs> <laughs> handle business. And uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, Titania is also on this slide because she came out almost every game that I played and was just a bugbear that would not go away. A bugbear. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah like that. not in not in the D and D sense. Just oh, the, okay. I I think there's some other definition of that word. But anyway, um, she is kind of a bugbear, brute. Um, but yeah, I got to got familiar with her, and that was uh, difficult. So yeah, I lost like four times at least with this precon deck, and that's really interesting to me. What you that you don't you didn't play Focus Rage. Because, like, when mm. I play She-Hulk, that's, like, my top priority is playing that. I am... Well, I was also very willing to just face tank a lot of attacks. And so my health was getting low enough as it was that it was never top of my priority list. I think if it were a two-cost card instead of a three-cost card, that might sway me to, to play it. But um, I was not finding it to be worth it at all, so... Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Because, like, the way I feel about it is I don't really mind the one damage because if I get an extra card that helps me deal with... If that extra card helps me deal with a minion or gets me an extra ally that can thwart or something like that, mm -hmm. then when I flip down, I just recover five anyways. Yeah. And then there's that combo later on where your gamma slam, you want to have damage. Right. So I try to, like, keep paying my health down to get more damage on the gamma slam yep trouble is i never drew into gamma slam at the right time me neither so <laughs> <laughs> well i did once i did that turn right before i i got one shot right uh maybe that was the gamma ultron slam? playthrough yeah i don't know i think it was the gamma ultron slam. playthrough where i had gamma slam and, and i was about to i was like really close to winning and then i just got like one shot mm -hmm. by encounters yeah, so um, her other card in her kit with, uh, what's it called, like dual life or something where... Uh, split personality. Split personality, where you change form and draw back up to your hand size. That felt great. I got a good mileage out of that one. But yeah, the focused rages were not my favorite in her kit. Um, anyway, yeah, I decided this precon, uh, she ain't working. So yeah. I, I hit the books. I looked through all of my, you know, collection, um, went on the card deck builder, um, champions deck builder and, uh, came up with something that I thought was pretty good. And I think it was like, it, probably, it was probably like 48 cards or something. I, we were talking about this for me, yeah. it's, it's hard to build decks that aren't 45 or more cards. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Because, mm -hmm. like, I had the same... Because, like, I don't think that going over 40 is always a bad thing, depending on what your build is. Yeah. But uh, it's really hard when you want to do everything. Like, oh, that's a good card. Yeah. But then it takes a lot of, I, I don't know, like, experience to figure out when it's actually worth it. To, to add that card versus not add that card. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you add in, like, like, it's the way Paulina does it. If you add in, like, everything that you're thinking about yeah, and then cut down, I find it, like, almost impossible to get 40 cards. That's that's what I do. So. Yeah, but if you if you 
start by just saying, okay, I need this card and this card and this card. Yeah. And then you get up to generally what happens for me is I get to like, I have 10, I add everything where I'm like, I absolutely need this for my deck idea to work. Mm -hmm. And then I have 10 slots left over. Right. And then I fill those in with whatever my weakness is. And then I stop. Mm -hmm. And then, and then from there, if I have 42 cards or more, I just, I cut down if I think it's actually correct. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a vision deck I built. It's going to be on a video uh, Friday, I think it comes out, is when I scheduled it. But then, uh, <laughs> or I guess Thursday. <laughs> but I in that deck, I had like 42 cards or something, but I specifically chose to cut down to 40 because I was looking for a specific combo. Yeah. So if I didn't have that specific combo, I probably, probably would have just left it. Mm-hmm. It's super difficult to know when. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't come from like Magic or Yu Gi Oh or something like to where you're building a bunch of decks there. Sure. Sure. In those games, it's like almost always optimal to do the minimum cards because of how they work. But mm-hmm. that's something I like about Champions is I don't think that the rule of you have to have a minimum deck size is nearly as important yeah. when you're drawing five or six cards every turn instead of one. Yeah, yeah. Because you see your whole deck. There's actually like a Definitely. small benefit to having more cards. Of like you get the encounter card not quite as soon mm-hmm. from your deck finishing. Sure. I I don't think about it, that factor too much, um, especially not against Ultron, who's bringing out minions, drone minions. But um, I think another part of the reason I was um, keeping a, a thick deck is because I didn't necessarily like some of She-Hulk's cards. That's another great reason to go above if you don't like the hero's cards. Yeah, precisely. So I think I, yeah, I, I had a, probably have a list of um, everything I added in on that first edit, but um, I remember I added in some cool allies like Hercules, reduce the cost to bring him in for every minion you're engaged with. Mm-hmm. There was Brawn. Um, Brawn's just, amazing for Ultron. Oh yeah, yeah, just to try and keep the scheme down a little bit. Um, boy, 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 who else was in there? Uh, Tigra and Hulk are in the pre-con already, and they were in the new edit, but um, yeah, a couple of more. Ones that I also specifically chose to have matching traits with She-Hulk, Avenger, and Gamma traits, because I had two copies of team building exercise in that deck as well. Um to help reduce the cost. I also threw in Yarn Bjorn, the, I think that's how you pronounce it. The, um, yeah, the weapon, the weapon. Yeah. Um, a couple more things like that and tried again and it was going really well. I had a, a pretty lucky first turn where I was also, I was also realizing if you can keep the, first stage of Ultron's main scheme from finishing mm-hmm. for another turn or maybe two more turns, hopefully. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, and so I had like a very lucky start on this uh, attempt with this new deck. And then I ended up losing because I was set up. I had damage in hand, but I had to flip down because I was very low health. Um, I was, well, yeah, I, I didn't know what the hand was before I flipped down, but, um, I, I knew I had to flip down cause I was very low health. Um, and I also had my beloved hall of heroes, which only helps if you're an alter ego to draw those cards. So, um, I flipped down and recovered this, the main scheme was on stage two out of three and it was only at three out of 10. So I was like, we're chilling. Um, and then I finished my turn, drew my hand. I was like, okay, I have enough damage to finish, uh, Ultron three. This feels great. He's at like nine health or something. Um, and then, yeah, of course he schemed twice. And of course, both of those schemes were the exact amount he needed to finish stage two and then stage three and ended with a triple and with a triple boost. So, um, he, he that's, had that's solo experience. He had lethal on me. Uh, like if he had one fewer boost icon, he would have 
he would Ultron have lost. top deck lethal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I messaged you after that game because I was like steamed. I was like, I got this close. Um, but was there, there was... any chance you survived if you stayed up? Oof. I don't think so. I didn't. I don't think I had a, an ally out, and I was already very low health. So, was there any chance you survived if you didn't reduce the threat until stage three? Because he would have over schemed on stage two, right? That's true. No, he he schemed, I think, for two more than he needed to on stage two. Uh, yeah, maybe I had said he did exactly on both stages. But no, stage two, her objection interrupt would not have helped. Um, stage three, when it flipped to stage three, it brought out the minion. So I knew I was going to have to account for one scheme. Oh, did you save it and it still you still lost? Well, yeah. Yeah, Crazy. I did. <laughs> so, so you even did it perfect and still as well as i could have in that specific scenario yeah unfortunate unfortunate and so i i messaged you afterwards and i was like i was so close just one one boost icon away um but you i and then i put together the deck on deck builder and shared mm -hmm. it with you you had a couple of of tips uh some of which I did not listen to and some of which I did listen to because you weren't a hundred percent convinced that team building exercise was critical. Yeah. Um, well, but it's interesting because I really like focus raged and you weren't using focus rage. Yeah. So like the resources that you're getting from team building exercise, I was assuming that you already had as well. I suppose, I suppose it's yeah. But I mean, in this, next pass at the deck edit um i still had two copies of team building exercise um i took out a couple of things that you said or yeah yeah i took out a couple of things which ones did i well i can't remember what i said um I don't, I don't know that you necessarily had um specific ones you wanted to cut but i know i did cut yarn bjorn because i was already on the fence about that one um I added in two copies of the power in all of us because uh, there were enough targets for that. Interesting. Um, yeah, I I think I think I also added in War Machine uh, with that. Um, a couple of more things like I got rid of Chase Them Down, um, and I ended up at forty nine cards in this next deck. Um, yeah, but. It and it it was another yeah it was the the very next attempt after um, after that first one where I got lucky again and was able to keep the main scheme on stage one for a couple of turns. Um, oh, one thing that you had suggested to add to the deck was Quinn Carrier, uh -huh. um, which um, I definitely appreciated that because I played it turn one and it was uh, it's, it's fantastic turn one yeah stuck around and then turn two i drew tigra and was very glad to see her because i would take her over any other ally in this scenario because she can just take out those minions as as one minion each each time one comes in yeah the only one that's comparable that i can think of is hawkeye, hawkeye. yeah but he can take out less of them but he takes them out before they activate yes so there's a bit of a trade-off. Mm -hmm. Make the call Hawkeye is better, but no make the call Tigra is better. <laughs> make the call... Yeah, no, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um, so that was... Uh, yeah, I've got had a couple lucky early turns. Um, was slowly building out, but there were some uh, turns where I was kind of just barely hanging on. Like... At one point, I drew two doubles and Hercules and basically some other dead card. Um, and all I could do was just play Hercules. There was only one minion out. And I was like, well, this is costing me five, but I have two doubles in my hand and nothing better to do. So some plays that did not feel great, did not feel optimal, and it felt pretty scuffed. But I was still cooking. I was still like, I was hanging in there. Um yeah, you're adding lemon zest onto the onto the board. Yeah, that's another thing I've been trying to do 
lately in real life is uh, cooking. Um, I, the, the friend who I brought a bunch of Wisconsin beers back to, she lent me some of her cookbooks because I'm trying to learn how to cook. So that was our, our trade. That's nice. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Titania came out. And I was, at this point, I was glad to see Titania because I had added a, two copies of Counterattack, the aggression preparation, uh, which is the perfect counter to her because after you take an attack for X damage, you deal X damage to that um, yeah. attacking enemy. So I was like, beautiful. And if I like really needed to clear out a minion, it could have worked with that too. Yeah. Um, so I was really happy I um, had that card in my um, in my pack. Titania came out. She, I, I, I got her down to four health and then let her attack me for four, but um, got rid of her with that counter attack. So that felt great. Uh, my deck worked as intended for that. Did um, you get to Gamma Slam shortly after? I never drew Gamma. Well, I drew it, but I never played Gamma Slam that game. Uh, I was hoping that'd be like Titania attacks for nine. And then you gamma slam on Ultron for the perfect man damage. Oh man, I mean it would have felt nice, but no, I uh, I think I I got it turn one and mulliganed it, and then it might have just been like a minion the next. Time. I got turn one gamma yeah. slams too. Yeah, feels bad. The turn one gamma slam is the most sad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah, Titania came out, so like her card shuffled into the deck, and I I mentioned that because later I. I came into a rules, j just like a, a rare edge case that felt great to to milf lawyer my way through, <laughs> because <laughs> um, I had taken care of her. She was gone. The only minions out were drone minions, and so one of her um, nemesis set cards was my encounter card, and it is um, genetically enhanced, which says. Attach the minion with the highest printed hit points. If there are no minions in play, this card gains surge. Uh, something like that. Um, and I was looking. I was like, well, these are the backs of my the cards in my deck. There are no hit points printed on the backs of these cards. Mm -hmm. And I like I looked through the the rules reference, uh, like to make sure that printed meant what I thought it meant. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, so there's no valid target for this. Um, <clears throat> for this card, because there's no minions with printed hit points. But also, there are minions in play, so no, it doesn't gain search. This card does nothing. I throw it into the discard pile. I move on. I'm a MILF lawyer. I don't need the Grim Rule. I know the rules well enough. I am the Grim Rule. <laughs> that's, that's my villain name, is the Grim Rule. <laughs> I have a personal vendetta against the Grim Rule, too. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Yeah. That's cool. All right, now I'm, I'm thinking of... I'm thinking about ideas. that scenario, and I'm wondering if it is that way. Because it says attached to the minion with the highest printed hit points. Mm -hmm. So, like, if we imagine the situation where, let's say, there's two minions out that have tied printed hit points. Yeah. Would it go on to one of them still? Because if there's, if there's no minion with the highest printed hit points... <laughs> Oh, or boy. they're tied for the highest. We're reaching new levels of rules because then the, the 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 drones don't have printed hit points, but they're still a minion. So and they're tied at at no printed hit points. <laughs> I don't actually know. Yeah, because that's a really interesting. Because yeah, I I don't know. Anyway, I think I was correct, and if you feel differently. Fight me in the comments. I'll be there. <laughs> Show up. Pull up. I would love that if there's just like a, a horde of people telling you that you're wrong. I'm in my heel era. Just, and then you just have to, you're the villain in this. Yeah. This is my royal villain, So you just, no matter what they say or what evidence they bring forward, you just double down. <laughs> there's like, nope. a, there's like a quote from the designer of this scenario saying, yeah, it definitely, it definitely still attaches. And you're like, I don't care. <laughs> Dude, the amount of psychic damage you can deal to people online just by hearing their argument and just going, nah, <laughs> it's good. It's great. I, I don't do it myself, but... You will now. Yeah. I, I don't enjoy schadenfreude that much, but <laughs> it's funny when other people do it. There's um, a card called schadenfreude in the, in, the, in the game. 
Is that uh, it's Rocket Pool? Raccoon's card? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish there were a, a word to describe my joy at other people's pain. There is one. It's Schadenfreude. Anyway, um, <laughs> I like that. Okay, so at some point I I flipped Ultron to stage three. I felt I was set up because I had like attack team out to deal with the two health minions. I had a uh, you know Tigra still out. Um, uh, Quinn Carrier was still out, you know, a couple other upgrades like that. Um, decided it was time to flip him. And boy, the second to last villain phase was, uh, it got a little, got a little scary because, oh, this is another thing I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. Um, both times in, in this game, both times I was able to game the main scheme in stage one and stage two such that it was Ultron's scheme activation that flipped it to the next stage um so that he would like overdo uh, it he would overdo it and sure enough i got rid of at least one triple boost that way um so that felt really good it like that's a, an advantage i guess of solo is that it's a little easier to game the main scheme that way if you're intending yeah. for it to flip so yeah, solo is there there are a lot of things in solo that are easier because there's only one player even yeah. though it's a lot of things that are harder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that i i let him flip to stage three i was like i have probably five turns to get um get through his health um and i still didn't have like great economy it was pretty much just quinn carrier but i was like i have not the not the most health but i i can't flip down and let him uh scheme after this like this has to be the last time i'm in alter ego um yeah. is him going to stage three so that yeah it went to stage three um in the second to last turn which I, I didn't know it was the second to last turn at the time but um it ended up being the second to last turn things got a little dicey because you tell me all the time that I'm too scared of letting the encounter deck run out. But guess what? Sometimes you can't forward off the main scheme. Um, <laughs> and sure enough, uh, one of my encounter cards, uh, that second to last turn was Master Plan, um, which had no valid side scheme target. So it milled through almost the entire remainder of the encounter deck um, to bring out a, a side scheme with a hazard icon. Wait, you, you he just flipped to stage three. No, I'm I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Yeah, I think because I thought he brought out a side scheme when he when he changed. He did. I finished three. that, and then oh okay. This the following turn, yes, uh, the following turn, he had like no minions in front of him, um, and I got master plan, which got I think left just like one face one card left in the encounter deck. Um, I was like, well, all of a sudden, um, what I thought would be five turns left is more like two or three turns. Um, yeah, that brought out a hazard icon. And so, um, yeah, things got dicey. But then I got through the next stage. I had Tigra with me. I had Brawn out. Um, I had Tag Team with like one use left. Um, and I, I, I had had, I had just had to tank like two attacks from, uh, the, the two minions that he had brought out. Um, and I was, I was a little worried about that because I was on one health. Um, and I was like, I can't flip down. The main scheme is, uh, on stage three. So I had that hazard icon. Yeah. I, I got him down to, I think nine health maybe seven health uh and i was like this could be it uh i think i have two turns left um but then um yeah I, I, i'm trying to remember the exact sequence sequence of things but i had two encounter cards because of that um because of that hazard icon um i had to stay flipped up i looked at my hand all the damage i had in my hand was um the Hellcat ally for one attack. Yeah. Um, 
but I was like, I think I think I got enough to do this. Like I I'm I'm like four damage above what I need to be. I I think that was it. After Braun had to defend against his um, attack, uh, so Braun took that. He's out. Um, and then I have two encounter cards. The first one is Ultron's Imperative, which is the side game he brings out when he flips to stage three. So suddenly there is another acceleration icon on the board. Um, the the encounter the villain deck just decked out, so there's a, an encounter token. Um, so I was like, shoot, suddenly this is my last turn. Um, yeah, and it brings out two minions. Ultron's right? Imperative also brings out two minions. And then you have to take out the minions. So I couldn't damage him until I took out the minions. And so I was looking at my hand. I, yeah, I don't quite remember exactly how much health he was on. But basically, if I had to take care of both of those minions um, and the remainder of Ultron's health, and this was the last turn, I at this point, I was two damage short. But I had a second encounter card in front of me. What do you think that encounter card was? Oh. Oh, it's okay. the only card in the villain deck that could let me somehow deal two damage. You had it was your obligation. It was my obligation. I flipped down to alter ego because of that card. I put an acceleration token on the main scheme because it was already like past what it needed to be. And then I flipped back up and I dealt two damage to an enemy. And I had That's exactly fantastic. enough resources that I spent for my hand to play Hellcat and enough uh, damage from my allies and the last use of tag team. Um, and <laughs> oh my god. I ended the game on one health, no cards left in hand, with exact damage. He top decked lethal the last time I faced him, and <laughs> I top decked lethal this time. I am so good at this game. I'm the MILF lawyer. I am the Grim Rule. Fight me in the comments. <laughs> yeah, master plan actually was your master plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it felt great. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I didn't. I've never had a She-Hulk playthrough go that well. Would we'll just like have it go like that exactly in my favor. Yeah. Isn't it strange how all the all the like older heroes, their obligation kind of helps them in a way, and it, like Scott Summers too, I think. Yeah, and like Iron determined. Man gets to flip down and then use Futurist. Mm -hmm. Peter Parker gets access to his mental resource. Yeah. She-Hulk gets to do her flip. Captain Marvel gets a card draw. Black Panther yeah. doesn't get benefit, but if he has Golden City down, he gets to draw two cards. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so yeah. crazy. And it gets you access to your recovery and then also flipping back up. Right. Yeah, I think um, I, I, I really enjoy the, the way that those encounter cards are designed. Um, we'll, we'll talk later in a bit about, like, my, my own rough shot attempts at, like, hero design. But yeah. I really, I, I think they, they hit the nail on the head with that one. I approve. Yeah, that, that's a great story. Yeah. And now it's immortalized on the Daring Lime channel. <laughs> Zesty Takes episode two. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I I was praying that my two encounter cards would be just like Titania and her attachment or something. Because I'm like, I don't want to deal with you. Um, this is funny how you, you can just start completely ignoring the cards that come out. And you're like, I only care about advance and a guard minion. Yeah. That's the only thing that I, that I have any... That, that matters at all. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that felt really great. And I felt like I had successfully beaten the core box with some cards that were not in the core box. But uh, I, yeah. I took on the most difficult encounter uh, from from what I assess would probably be uh, the, the toughest matchup. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was my trials and tribulations and triumphs with She-Hulk. Was it fun enough to where you want to keep playing She-Hulk? No. Or was it like, I'm no. quitting at the peak? I think I'm done. I'm retiring after having done that. Yeah. Yeah, She-Hulk, you, you've already done everything there is to do with She-Hulk. You won. Yeah. I finished. So, we can go to the next slide, probably. Um, that's all I gotta say about that. Yes, okay. So, the last hero that I had to test uh, from the core box was Black Panther. <laughs> 
But while I was going to reach for Black Panther's cards and saw, hey, Black Widow, I'm going to give her a shot. Because I've seen you and Paulina play Black Panther enough times that I wasn't mm-hmm. uh, going to be surprised by anything in his kit. Yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give Black Widow a shot. And she ended up being the most fun hero out of all the new ones that I played. Um, just the, yeah, all the well, you're already preparations. using preparations before playing her. With counterattack. Like, and... even when you had access to my whole collection, mm-hmm. you kept playing, like, Lion Wait in your decks because you liked the preparations so Lion much. Lion Wait, yeah. Yes. Um, she ended up just feeling, like, really good. And so I took uh, basic Red Skull on uh, with her, and then I took on Expert Red Skull with her. And the injustice aspect both times and it was really just really fun i think what really made her click was first of all i just i enjoy characters in in all media that are like the the spy archetype who's already thought like six steps ahead Mm -hmm. and um really excited for nick fury to come out oh yeah with the next expansion yeah, with a Black Widow villain. Spoilers. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I, people already know. But if you didn't know, now you know. I'm in my heel era. <laughs> um, <laughs> villain. So, yeah, Black Widow, I think, just the way that her card draw works in Alter Ego mode when you play a preparation card, uh, it just felt great. Like, and also, okay, that was one reason I loved her. A second reason is Covert Ops, uh, because I drew it at the perfect time, the first time I played her. Like, I looked through the cards, uh, I looked through, their, through her kit before I uh, built a deck for her. Um, I was like, okay, Covert Ops, that's good. Um, but then during the game, I, I drew it at the perfect time, and I realized, wait a minute, this is not a hero action. This is just an action. Yeah. I'm in alter ego. I can stay in alter ego, confuse the villain, take care of Red Skull's side scheme. I'm I'm chilling. It felt great. It was like I don't know. I use this analogy a lot, but like Gandalf appearing at dawn on the fifth day. It's like that's my boy. That's exactly who I needed right now. Yeah, just felt great. I I don't know. I I think you said. Well, how do you feel about Black Widow? Ah, uh, about Black Widow, I have i haven't played her as much as like the i've played her more than like captain america but i haven't played her as much as any of the heroes i play consistently Mm -hmm. my experience with her was actually just playing through the red skull campaign okay and i played her pre-con and then i changed it and then i made that justice deck that i told you about a little bit Mm -hmm. it was a confused deck built around float like a butterfly to increase uh what dan- death dance is that what it's called yeah dance of death dance of yeah to increase that to be a two three four damage instead of a one two three damage because mm-hmm. i felt like her damage was just like lacking yes a bit but i wanted to lean into the spy stuff so i was like oh i i want to figure out a way to do both mm-hmm. so i did that and it worked really well but then i never for some reason i never like felt an urge to play her again Sure. Like I enjoyed playing her, uh, probably like middle of the road for me on mm-hmm. enjoyment when I played her, but then I just haven't played her again. So I don't know. The only other experience I have with her was when I was designing that like horror encounter. Yeah. And yeah. I like was, I was fiddling with the rules of like, okay, since this is a horror encounter, you don't get to have any help in this encounter. So you can't include like helicarrier where there's people in the helicarrier helping you or any allies (laughs) or anything like that. Right. And then I was like, I built a, I built a protection deck for her and it was just a horrible deck. It was maybe (laughs) one of the worst decks I've ever built. (laughs) And it was partly because I wasn't allowed to use allies. And then also because it was just a bad deck. Yeah. So it didn't go well. There's probably a lot of, uh, protection preparation cards though. Right. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Protection's the aspect I know the least about. Same. Like, yeah. I'm sure there are. Cause like, I know there's some that came out with, it just um, seems like it would be Nightcrawler, right? There's like, there's a couple that come into play, like per, that when then, when a mini enters play, I can't remember what they are, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I built a horrible deck for her. <laughs> lost 
twice in a row because I was like, oh, I'll try that again. Yeah. It turns out I designed the encounter to be extremely difficult and then also didn't let you have allies. And I was playing a bad deck and it was like, yeah, it was the most decided losses I've had mm -hmm. playing, I think. It, Shoot. Was, it was really bad. How, how did you handle her signature ally, Bucky Barnes? Was he in there? Uh, Yeah, but I wasn't allowed to play him. Okay, he was just a resource. I, I was just imposing that on myself. I, I wasn't mm -hmm. adding that you can't play your signature ally into the campaign, but I was just not playing him. Yeah. To yeah. stay on theme. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. I I have minimal opinions about Black Widow. Sure. I, I really enjoyed her the first time I played her. Yeah. I think the one other the one other part of her kit that made me love her was her grappling hook preparation. Mm-hmm. Um, just because every time I got to use it, I thought of the, the, the line from Vets Vet by MC Chris, which was like a 20, 25 year old, like proto nerd rap song from, from the perspective of Boba Fett. And there's one line where he says, think you can cook. I got a grappling hook. And I thought of that every time I played that or I, yeah, I got to use that card and that just. It tickled me. I'd be I'd be excited to see you play Black Widow more. I especially to... since we're gonna play the Agents of Shield box together. Yeah, we have to use Black Widow at some point. Black Widow versus Black Widow. Yeah. Okay. Why not? It'd be like we'll, we can take like Hawkeye, Black Widow, and then are there any other heroes currently out that we'd want to play in there? That's like Spider Woman's a Shield agent on the other side, right? I don't know. I haven't looked. Yeah, I haven't played Spider Woman that much either. Yeah. Yeah, Black Widow's cool, but no minimal experience from the Daring Line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think um, also in expert mode, under surveillance, that's a card that increases the threshold of the main scheme by four, right? Oh, I wanted to mention that. It's so good against Ultron. I, I believe I it. I just add like three copies of it to my deck against Ultron. Yeah. Put it on there immediately. With this, it saved my bacon both times. Like, yeah, he, he got within one of um, finishing the, the main scheme after I had played under surveillance on it. And uh, it sounds like the game is perfectly mode. balanced for for Johnny and solo mode. <laughs> for me with Black Widow and solo mode. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> She-Hulk. I mean, yeah, I think uh, I think they designed around me. Yeah, they didn't know it. They knew that you would be here eventually. <laughs> um, oh shoot! I also like. I really, I really like Red Skull. We we played through Rise of Red Skull together, and um, he changes a lot depending on the modulars too. I think so there's a lot of space to explore Red Skull. Sure, I I I didn't. I never. Um, I I just used the the recommended uh, presets with all the the Hydra modulars in there, but. Um, I he's formidable and the sleeper side scheme is like the one of the most formidable parts of his kit I think it is my favorite part of his kit yeah yeah the big mech that just wakes up <laughs> and it also like it felt like Black Widow's Dance of Death was a really good counter to that because it comes in yeah, with toughness tough. and five per player health so I I did have to take one consequential damage. Doesn't it have retaliate though? Retaliate one. So like. But her attack two... says make the fo doesn't it say to make the following attacks in order? Yes. They're all separate attacks. Right. And so the first one knocks off the tough. So it didn't take damage. And then you take retaliate. I take one retaliate damage after I damage it for two, and then I damage it for three, killing it, so it does not deal another retaliate damage. So I only take one retaliate damage out of that if I did it right. Let's grab the card. I have it. Let's right grab here. the card. I think I'm right though. Yeah, you could be. This is something that I'd probably look up. Make the following three attacks in order. Deal one damage to an enemy, deal two damage to an enemy, deal three damage to an enemy. So you deal one damage to an enemy. Ping off the knock his tough off. Take a damage. Deal two damage to an enemy. Take a damage. Would I take a damage after pinging tough? Yeah. Because you're still attacking it to get the tough off. Well, I wasn't on one health, so it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> I won. Yeah, so it like does counter him, but also it's like take two damage, take yeah. out sleeper. All right, so maybe I'm not the Grim Rule. 
Maybe I don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, no, you are. You're the villain. You gotta double down. <laughs> yeah. Either they... way, very fun, and I, I, I appreciate the extra challenge of the sleeper in that. I think it's great. Yeah, I. You, you mentioned that you didn't remember the sleeper, right? When we played through it, I didn't. I don't remember him coming out, but maybe we just yeah, took he him did right away. He did. He came engaged with Paulina, if I remember right. Okay. I and think so. Was I... What was I playing? I was playing Adam Red Warlock, Skull. right? Was it Adam Warlock? It was Rise of Red Skull. Yeah, I was Adam Warlock, Paulina was Black Panther Justice, and you were... X-23 Aggression? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we just took out the sleeper immediately. And then moved on with our lives. <laughs> but it's a lot scarier. I don't know. It... It feels like both less and more scary. Because in solo, it's like, okay, that's a big minion with tough. Yeah. And retaliate. And then multiplayer, it's like, oh no, it has 10 health now. It has 5 for player, right? 5 for player, yep. Yeah, it has 10 health now, or 15 or 20 or wh whatever it is. But then also there's 4 of you to deal with it if it has 20 health. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, it... I just, I, I really liked him. And just the art on it is cool, too. It's just like a big old robot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a very fun, very fun uh, couple of games in Standard and then Expert. Um, the last thing I did with the core box before I came back here was play another game with my brother-in-law, Alex, uh this time i was black widow leadership and he was hawkeye justice did you have um what was it called uh rapid response i did have rapid response <laughs> i had three copies of rapid response and those were great i had uh i had goliath ally in my deck i had the captain marvel ally in my deck in multiplayer especially it's really really fun to play nick fury draw three yeah and then rapid response, he so he blocks. Yep. Uh, he's defeated, and then you rapid response and back in, draw three cards, and then he blocks again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I didn't even like fully think about that, but that is definitely definitely a play. It's not as good in solo when he doesn't get the block unless they get an extra attack, mm -hmm. but in multiplayer it's really reliable that you get the two blocks mm -hmm. like oh no nick fury has one damage on him when he comes in from rapid response yeah but then you just you know draw three cards mm -hmm. it was fun with damage too like play nick fury deal four damage and he attacks for two that's six yeah and then he blocks comes back in deals four more damage blocks yeah what's wrong with that i d i actually use the deal four damage a lot more than most people do because mm -hmm. like i use it in my playthroughs with him and then people are like what you did four damage instead of drawing three cards i'm like right. yeah sometimes like, i wasn't gonna get the damage from those three cards i don't think yeah the the last turn of that game with black widow and hawkeye we were facing just standard claw and i that was the first time i used nick fury to deal four damage it was just on the last turn of that yeah um feels good yeah because like four cost for six damage isn't like the best mm -hmm. but when you don't have a better option in your hand it's sure nice to have four costs for six damage yeah absolutely so that i think that was the like the extent of my your solo escapade box uh-huh yeah any uh enlightenments you've had any any change of perspective after playing solo with your own stuff instead of multiplayer with me i first of all i i greatly appreciate playing with two living rule books um because <laughs> i was finding that a lot of my solo games were about as long as our three player games um <laughs> between just having to double check rules and and having a little more analysis paralysis without other people to bounce ideas off of yeah um, i was ending up taking a while um but then when you're just alone in wisconsin yeah you have just so much time to do it. Chilling in my parents' basement, listening to Pistol Shrimps radio, drinking a spin drift, and playing some games. And then playing a milf lawyer, trying to figure out <laughs> just... if Titania's attachment goes onto a drone menu. <laughs> <laughs> playing a milf lawyer, trying to have it all. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I, I, I'd, I'd like to play more two-player mode. Um, I mean, when I'm here and playing with you guys, I'm I'm like always gonna want to play three-player mode, of course. But I could be interested in trying two-handed. So two-handed is fun. That's how I speed ran my uh, core box stuff because I wanted yeah. to like fully play every character. So before doing like the expert challenges. I was just playing two pl- two handed so I could get through it faster of like experiencing all the heroes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two handed is weird because it's like it, it, in a sense it's a lot easier because you're you have a plan for both heroes. Yeah. But in another sense, it's like I find myself not caring enough to <laughs> really think out both turns. Mm-hmm. Whereas in multiplayer, it's a lot easier for me to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. And then add a little bit of mental energy into being like, hey, if you do this first, it makes things work out better for me versus yeah. like overanalyzing and doing everything in the perfect order and two handed. Right. Yeah. I like imagine playing like, I don't know, like Captain Marvel and She-Hulk mm-hmm. and you both have these alter ego responses that you want to do and the timing changes everything. Like who mm-hmm. gets the card? Is it She-Hulk or is it right. Captain Marvel? And then like She-Hulk's like, I need to flip down and then flip up at this time and deal the two damage but do i hit the minion or do i hit the villain and yeah. captain marvel has to be like but i have an action in my hand that i could do on your turn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you really go into it like all the way it's a lot to think about yeah that i mean my my next thought with that is like it does sound interesting but then again my solo play is taking the time of a three-player game so a uh, two-handed would be a six-player game for me, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's I guess it's worth trying, but um, yeah, I'm... I think just play on standard. And yeah, then, and then don't worry about it about winning or not. I'm only not about winning, but don't bit. don't worry about like doing everything perfect. Yes, yeah. Um, other thoughts. Uh, t- still haven't played Black Panther because I just had so much fun with Black Widow. I got sidetracked. Yeah. So I can't fully give uh, a- an opinion on the core box. Um, but this this was my first time against Ultron, and I think you and I agree that he is just a very very well designed, fun, challenging yeah. final boss. I think he's great. Yeah. Because he doesn't feel unfair when you play him, and he's consistently roughly the same difficulty. Mm-hmm. Whereas Claw as a villain that is like the opposite of that to where sometimes he does absolutely nothing. Yeah. And then other times you get Melter as a boost (laughs) into the other one that brings out a minion and then gang up. Yep. Yep. And then he attacks you for six instead of zero. (laughs) Like shoot. Yeah. yeah. When, cause when claw gets like, you're like, okay, I won't block you you block against claw. And then he does zero damage. And you're like, okay, my activation's gone. Yeah. Or then you don't block against Claw the next time, and it does zero damage, or one damage, mm-hmm. but then he gets the boost card. If this attack deals damage, exhaust your hero, and you're like, oh. Yeah. And then other times, you're like, okay, this is this has gone on long enough. I'm done with your shenanigans. I'm not blocking you. I know you don't yeah. do damage. <laughs> and then he hits you for six. Yeah. God. It's It always works out that way. Like, one of the times I was playing Black Widow against Red Skull, um, <clears throat> one of his boost cards while I was in Alter Ego, um, was a boost to exhaust a character I control, and I, I didn't have any allies out, so that felt terrible because I was on one health. Uh, this was not the game that I misplayed the sleeper, um, but I couldn't recover because I was, uh, yeah, it was bad. But um, did you play Peter Parker at all? Not while I was there. No. You've only played Peter Parker one time, right? We played him against your um, homebrew rival. Yeah, you were playing protection. And I played him again, I thought. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I think I might have played him one more time recently. But not while I was back there playing solo. Yeah. And I'm playing him in a campaign right now, which we can save for a later episode. Sure. But I have a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> the last turn you've had about you had a whole deck's worth of cards in front of you. Uh, just played out his upgrades. But um, other thoughts on the on the solo box? Okay, what, good what which ones are your favorite heroes out of the core box? And which core ones box. do you think are the strongest, and for why? Okay, uh, favorite out of the core box, Boof, Iron Man. 
he it feels feels fun to just like get his tech upgrades out um captain marvel again like just feels hard to lose with um unfortunately peter parker is not my favorite um just again we've talked about he can't thwart unless he gets extra lucky um or you can only play justice yeah she hulk i put through the paces and i um i appreciate some of her design but there are also cards of hers that i don't like and um i'm i'm comfortable not like coming back to her anytime soon uh and then black panther jury's out um that that was all the core box Mm -hmm. yeah uh amongst the villains uh rhino is just uh he's not to be underestimated but uh at this point i'm like he's too simple to be like super engaging for me yeah uh claw's good like i don't yeah you mentioned that a lot of people test decks against claw because he's got a little bit of everything especially yeah, with the maybe of evil. inside schemes yeah damage um and then what else we got uh ultron one of one, one of the best villains i faced up against he's a solid a tier at least villain for me yeah, yeah. Yeah. He just, he never, he hasn't gotten any less interesting as more stuff came out either. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Rhino has and Claw has to me, but, but Ultron stays fresh the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely having gone, having faced him quite a lot. We should play him in multiplayer at some point because the drones go crazy in multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think how how that would be different. Because uh, there's three players, so on is um when you everyone has to choose like the drone or the threat. Yeah. And then so he's just like he's just adding a drone to every player, and then the encounter cards are like every player puts top two cards to their deck as a drone. Mm-hmm. It's like like when you flip into stage three, I'm pretty sure the I can check here. I'm pretty sure the um, that side scheme says that each player puts the top two cards to the deck as a drone. It's I think it might just be the first player. That's invasive no, AI. Yeah. Ultron's imperative. Yeah, the first player. Oh, never mind. Okay. Where is it? Because I feel like there's. Mm, each, yeah, each player puts the top card of the deck into play as a drone. Mm-hmm. Single player. This is like a relief. And there's three copies yeah. of these. Yeah. But in multiplayer. Like, like we, we play, play the three player, player each, each one of these is three drones yeah and then in and if you look at it as hero like uh plus one attack for each drone and engage with you yep so then like you really want to deal with those drones so he's dealing the three drones are like three damage as he filters through mm-hmm. plus the drones that's so like six damage throughout the villain phase which is a lot and then when if he if he brings out those drones on this side yep. that's bad and then this one, the, yeah, this one is also the, the second main scheme is each player has to choose two threat or a drone. Right, yeah. Yeah, so the, the drones really go crazy in multiplayer. Sure. And I, yeah, now that I think about it, when he's on stage three, and if there's any drone minions out, mm-hmm. he can't take damage. That does definitely change in multiplayer then. Yeah. If someone can't get to their drones first. Yeah, that, that makes more, more sense. Um, yeah, I want to I want to try him in multiplayer soon. Yeah, because then tight. Um, yeah, that's about all I got on the core box. My strongest take is that Black Widow is my favorite best core box hero. <laughs> best core box hero. <laughs> yeah, we can move on now. Yeah. Oh well, there we go. We did not remember the slides. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, is there anything else I want to add? I guess I'll just say Captain Marvel's uh, triple boost with her energy channel cards. That feels good. Feels good. She feels like, yeah, we talked about it, but like, yeah, quite strong with that in her kit. Yeah. So we messed up. That's okay. We can talk about Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to hear this because you were telling me at the beginning of like how 
oh, it's so hard for me to build a deck. I've never played deck builders. I'm getting analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. And then you leave to Wisconsin and you're like, yeah, I'm I'm going to design <laughs> my own hero. Now that I've built three decks, I'm ready to build a <laughs> hero from the ground up. And granted, it's probably like really imbalanced. Um, but yeah, I was kind of going through um, some of what I love about Moon Knight and thinking, how could I adapt these things into this game? And again like the pattern seeking brain loves seeking patterns and so how can i adapt all this lore and stuff into mechanics um to surprise people and um yeah just uh make for something pretty enjoyable so i had like i have rough ideas of some of his cards um you had said that there's you had seen someone else's take on a Moon Knight homebrew, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like a form for each aspect. I can't remember exactly how it works, but it looked interesting. A form for each aspect? Yeah, oh, so okay. like he gained different like benefits for each uh, aspect. Like one side gave him better benefits for justice, another for aggression. And then his hero traded cards, like his hero specific cards, were also aspect cards. Oh, okay interesting yeah my my attempt at bringing um the the his backstory into mechanic form was mark specter moon knight he has dissociative identity disorder um and so my thought was maybe i'll make his alter alternate identities into persona cards as part of his kit mm -hmm. where you still have one identity card but then within the kit there are three other persona cards that you could play and each would have like a couple of yeah a little bit different um yeah that'd be fun ideas. too um so i think no first of all it's october and i love i love everything halloween so that's why i put this this fake uh dracula panel in this yeah that was i think this honestly might have been the first place i saw moon knight was this uh fake uh panel going around i was like this is a cool looking character i don't think this is real but um i want to know more and so <clears throat> yeah anyways um the the couple other um things i thought was well he's the avatar of khonshu like the egyptian god of the moon and um khonshu is the other graphic here um big old bird skull which i just i love I love all the the artistic takes on Kanchu online. Again, I love birds. I love birding. Yeah, it's always back to birds with Johnny. It is. Um, so, Kanchu, not only the god of the moon, but also the um, said to be uh, the protector of travelers and the god of healing. And so I was thinking, oh yeah, maybe I'll like put a little healing in Moon Knight's kit, um, and maybe uh, I. I thought maybe one of his cards could be like a defense event um where if an ally is about to be defeated you can like similar to make the call where like mm -hmm. once they're defeated you can you like rapid response rapid response thank you yeah um similar to rapid response where if they're defeated you can like maybe exhaust moon knight maybe deal some damage to him to bring that ally back in play and I, i'm trying to like i was trying to think about like how best to balance that but yeah um it's a fun idea, though. I like that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I also, another passion of mine is just armchair astronomy, and so another idea I had was, well, I want to make his thwart event called Sea of Tranquility, because that's one of the um, <clears throat> areas on the moon. One of the the seas of the moon is called mm -hmm. the Sea of Tranquility. Um, and I was like. <laughs> I called it Sea of Tranquility, and I said, like, you can thwart four or something uh, and ignore crisis icons because there's another sea on the moon called the Sea of Crises. And so <laughs> just little things like that that were kind of for my entertainment. The pattern-seeking brain. The pattern-seeking brain. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of have a question, though. How familiar are you with homebrewing in general in this game? Is, it, is there a big scene for it? yeah okay there's uh there's uh, okay i don't want to miscredit anything here right but there's a discord 
And there seems to be a leader in the Discord mm. that kind of put together a bunch of templates mm -hmm. so that you don't have to start from scratch. So you grab like a template of like a, a hero event, for instance. Yeah. And then you change all the colors, change the art, and then change the uh, cost and stuff. And it just sort of automatically makes it look exactly like one of the Marvel Champions cards. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's really, it's a lot easier to make that. That is nifty. Yeah. And then in that Discord as well, there's like a bunch of different um, people that make a hero or a villain, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. And then they, once you like make it, you can like submit it to them. And then they'll give you a uh, like your own channel for all your stuff, so you can you can go in and look at everyone's different stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And then also, there's just like a bunch of support people like helping each other out with like art or because uh, like there's a lot of people that know Photoshop well in there. Yeah. So if you take a comic panel and you're like, oh, I wish this textbook box wasn't covering this part of it because mm -hmm. I'd like to use it for my art. There's people that are like good enough at Photoshop to just like remove it the text box and it still looks correct that's great so uh, yeah and then yeah it's a pretty big community in there it looks like much bigger than the daring line sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that's cool i like have you tested out other people's homebrew heroes and villains and no such? i haven't okay i've looked at it at a handful of them mm -hmm. but i haven't i haven't printed them and played them yeah other than mine Right, which I did use the uh, the templates from that Discord mm -hmm. to to make Silver Surfer. Yeah, that was that was fun. I I remember you invited me over that day, but you you wouldn't tell me what was going on. You, yeah, you're just like I have I have a plan for you, <laughs> and you just you needed someone to test out your your yeah. ideas. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with him. He's really fun, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I I wanted to keep he's like intentionally simple because I wanted to make sure my first hero that I made just worked. Yeah, yeah. I have plans for a, a beast hero. Oh, that could be cool. Because I'm so sad that he did he he's a villain, but right. he's not a hero. Yeah. And he was part of the original X Men and then has like been there the whole time. Mm hmm. And he's blue. And he's blue. I don't know anything about Dark, about Beast except that he's blue and he's played by Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, he's really smart. He's blue. He's really strong, <laughs> and he is really and he likes literature. He talks in literature quotes all the time. Oh, okay. I I might have known that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, he's super cool, but I don't want to spoil my ideas for it. But I have I have ideas. They're cooking. Yeah. Um. What else to say about my my Moon Knight ideas? Uh, one of his alter egos is Jake Lockley, who's a cabbie. Who, that's that's how Mark Spector uh, gathers intel um, on the street level about you know what's what's cooking among the common criminals and whatever. And then he has another uh, alter ego that's um, not alter ego in, in the game sense, but um, another another identity named Stephen Grant, who's just happens to be like a millionaire. Um, yeah. Which I always felt was goofy uh, that one of his uh, alternate identities just happens to traffic in these social circles. And then the another of his identities just happens to traffic in traffic. And it's like, yeah, what are we doing here? It, it It's kind of gimmicky and from a different era of comics, I suppose, originally. But um still i was i was like trying to think of ways to to um adapt those those couple of guys um also i i have not messed a lot around with aerial mechanics but i was thinking of way ways to make him aerial and how that might benefit cuz moon knight doesn't have the power of flight he just has a cloak that helps him fall with style i guess but he's yeah it sounds like it could just be one of his upgrades yeah that's what i was thinking um but then how would you want to interact with it i don't know so yeah my, my thought was uh so in the comics his his sidekick is frenchy duchamp um who's a pilot 
And so, you know, if, if his signature ally Frenchie is like, my thought was like, as a, an action, you can exhaust Frenchie to give him Ariel. Um, that could be fun. Yeah, something like that. Just like, let's go for a helicopter ride. Um, and then you can fall with style and improve your events and things, things like that. Um, so yeah, th it, I, I do think it's probably either way too complicated or way overpowered or both as it currently stands in the note on my phone but um it's, yeah you can it's, you can just get it down though and then adjust it into balance later yeah um oh and the other thing i did was like i i was like his nemesis minion i'm gonna make the werewolf who's his, his real name isn't jack russell but uh his nemesis's name is his like new name that he adopts is Jack Russell and he's a werewolf. Um, and the other, the other thing I did was instead of star icons on his boost cards, I would put moon icons on his boost cards and there's no, there's no difference, but they're just moons. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's about like it. a, a insert that comes with them and treat all moon icons exactly yeah. the same as star icons. Yeah. Um, or what if they're, what if they actually were different? I mean, because they could have like a theme among their effects. Yeah, that's related to the moon. Just like losing control of your identity in some way or something. I don't know. I don't know. Because like, what if it was like? Because you were mentioning that you wanted to add the different parts of the moon. Mm -hmm. Like, what yeah. if the one of the moon icon effects, like, was like a crisis? Yeah, yeah. Like caused like the caused like, like maybe it caused like even Mark Spector. To have a crisis icon printed on his identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, something like that. Yeah, there. Uh, that reminded me. Like another put thing I thought of, putting in the kit was like similar to, what I enjoyed about She Hulk's character split, uh, her card split personality. Um, it it felt like appropriate to put a similar thing in Moon Knight's kit where like you have to change form, but you get like some benefits from that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you know, what if there was something in his kit that also like made you randomly be in a form at the start of every turn? Oh, oh damn. I kind of like that, but it, it could feel pretty punishing too. I know, but like, if you got that to work, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah. Like you roll like a D four or something. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I yeah, and honestly, I I have it's been a while since I read any of his comics, and I, there might oh, be like you hate milling the encounter deck too, right? That's what true. if you like milled the encounter deck, and then based off of the boost icons, it determined your form. Hmm. Mm hmm. I yeah, I could see that. Like, would you be able to like pay a resource to change to the form you wanted? Ooh, because there. Or does he have any like control that. of it? I don't know how it is in the comics. Uh. I mean, it can vary from writer to writer, I suppose, but um, yeah, generally there's not a whole lot of control he has over it. And there's also debate about whether <clears throat> this Egyptian god Khonshu is an actual deity who has chose him, chosen him as his avatar. Or just or a different version of him. A, a, like a delusional alternate identity that has um, that he views as like above him, but is still compelling him to fight for the weak and such stuff like that. It's interesting. Um, and yeah, it changes from writer to writer, but I think there's, I don't think he has like a whole lot of control over that ever. I wonder if it could also be like, instead of like every turn you flip for him, like what if he just like had like multiple obligations, like Scarlet Witch mm, where yeah. like they had moon effects that you're talking about yeah that changed like that changed him to a form and there's like one for each form mm -hmm. and if it was like revealed as an encounter card or a boost card that would be interesting multiple obligations yeah i forgot that what scarlet witch had those but she kind of wants those yeah um, yeah that that's neat i uh boy the, the the cylinders are firing he must be a good character because it seems like it's really easy to like translate interesting ideas from the character there are a lot of yeah just like his his character design i i find real appealing and like the iconography of him and and uh, Khonshu and um it's all just like 
ripe for uh, just finding interesting um, ways to adapt it. You're right. Just like bringing astronomy into it as well. And um, yeah, I didn't even like touch the like religious aspect of it, but you know, you know, Khonshu is part of this whole Egyptian pantheon. And what does that mean about the fact that the, you know, like Asgardians really exist in the MCU and do they just chill with the Egyptian pantheon? I don't know, but yeah, um, it's really unclear to me how it all works. Yeah. But that's what you get from having, having like thousands of writers over decades and decades. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, that, that, that was kind of, um, all I had to say on that. I think, um, I just love Moon Knight. I love that he's, I, my favorite part of him is when he takes like the Mr. Knight form where he's just wearing like an all white suit. He's got like a, the mask over it's a white mask and, um, you know, someone uh, in, in one of the comics, someone says like, don't you think that's a little unsubtle? Like everyone's going to, all your enemies are going to see you come in. And he's like, I want them to see me come in. I just think that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess we can move on. Yeah. To the end. To the end. I thought this would be fun since this is the um, Zesty Takes podcast. If in the comments below the video, if you just say what you thought your Zesty, thought the Zestiest take of the video was. Yeah. And then Johnny can fight you in the comments because <laughs> he's the villain of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just closing here, I guess. Uh, if you like the podcast, we can keep making them because I enjoy just talking to my friend. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it too. And then, yeah, I'm really close to a thousand subscribers. I'm like, what, four away or mm -hmm. six? If you could subscribe and tip me to the thousand, the thousand mark, I'd appreciate that a lot. Or if you go with Johnny's thing, you could unsubscribe to be the villain of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Don't don't do that on my account. I mean, I'm I'm here to make you look better. I'm the heel. You're the face. I'm the lime. You're the lime. You're the face on the lime. You're I gotta the... get you like a we can maybe draw you up a, a lime <laughs> a emoji. Lemon. Maybe it's just like mine, but like invert like flip the horizontal <laughs> and then the yellow. <laughs> that could work. Yeah, we'll think about it. Yeah. So stay zesty, everyone, and I'll, we'll see you maybe weekly or or every other week. <laughs> see ya.